now is Leo Girard. He is the international president of the United Steelworkers of America, and he is somebody um, that I think is very happy with today's announcement. Mr. Girard, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Glad to be on with you. So let me start with um, why do you uh, why do you believe these steel tariffs are needed, and why do you think they're going to work? Well, let me put things in perspective. Uh, this has been a long-term problem. Uh, go back to all the way to President Clinton. When he was leaving office, he wrote a letter to the Commerce Department that said the Commerce Department should take action because the steel industry had been under attack for 30 years. So that for at least the 30 years since then, we've been pushing hard for some responsible res response to what's going on in the economy. Our members aren't looking for something special. I want to make that clear. Our members mm -hmm. are looking for a level playing field. And what President Trump has done is he's given a signal that he's going to level the playing field. We've tried to get Democratic administrations, Republican administrations right. to do this. And, and let me make another point about Canada. Uh, Canada has a trade deficit with the United States. The United States has sent more steel to Canada than Canada sent to the U.S. But next year, Canada might send more and it'll go the other way because we have an integrated market. So I'm looking forward to the next steps and making sure that this is going to translate into jobs. Now, you you're want to make an exception for Canada. Not everybody does. But let me ask you this. What you, you just made a case for how difficult it is, I think, to impose tariffs. Because you said, well, Canada and the United States, it's an integrated market, particularly in the steel industry. Um, there's a lot but, of but manufacturing. Ch but Chuck, Chuck, there's a lot of American Chuck, manufacturing in this country that uses steel imports to make things here in America, and it's this, it's, a, both, it's going both to ways. complicate it, right? Chuck, Chuck both ways. Can, Canada has, has got a real exception because of the integration of our economy. An auto part might start off in uh, Hamilton making steel. It'll come to Detroit. It'll go back to Windsor. It'll come back to some other place in the U.S., and it goes into an automobile. So that it's a really an integrated market that we've got. But let me say this. The president has made it really clear that he's going to tackle these trade deficits. It's right. unacceptable that America would have an $800 billion trade deficit, but when you subtract services, roughly yeah. $600 billion annual trade deficit. That's a wealth transfer. And you can't argue that those trade deficits are creating good jobs. Those trade deficits are taking good jobs away. And, and I heard now, some people speak argue, on, Mr. Mr. Gerard, heard, some people argue, though, that, yeah. that the power of trade, particularly in the United States, is that... Yes, there are going to be some countries where there's trade deficits, but there's also a national security component. These, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're exporting values. You're exporting democracy. You're exporting um, uh, an ability to, to have a financial ally. I, I don't understand your point, but I'll tell you this. China doesn't only dump steel into our market, it dumps unemployment into our market. Right. And so I'm, we know who the point. cheater we know who the right. cheaters are. And Do you I think, think this should be initial... targeted just at China? No, I think that we should look at all the cheaters. And, and we look, should look at those countries that don't cheat, the Who's countries cheating? that play by the rules. Who else is cheating on steel uh, as bad Ch as China? China, China, South Korea, India, Vietnam, uh, Russia, uh, not only on steel but on aluminum. And, and let's put things in a real perspective. In, in 15 years ago, America made about 130 million tons of steel. Now we make 85 million tons of right. steel. But you know what? We're the most productive steel industry in the world. Our members can make steel at less than one hour, man hour per ton up to a man hour and a half. Right. And a ton of steel from America has got one third the carbon emissions that it does from China, from South Korea, from Vietnam, from India, from Egypt, from Brazil. Those countries all cheat. All we're asking for is a level playing field. And what the president has done is send a signal that he's going to help us right. get a level playing field. And we gave the Republicans, we gave the Democrats, right. we've given every government since before Clinton hope that they would do something. And Wilbur Ross and Peter Navarro. And Bob Lighthizer deserve to be complimented for recognizing that if the next 20 years are like the last 20 years, we really have a national security problem. And we need Does to he, make sure that our, friend, our friends are with did, us and not against us. Mr. Jard, tell me about why George W. Bush tried this um, and, he, and he pulled them back after about a year. Uh, why no. didn't those steel tariffs have the impact that I think you're hoping these will. Why do you think it's going to be different this time? Well, first of all, they did have an impact. The, 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 we had pushed for a three-year resolution, and we got 18 months. And in that 18 months, steel industries put in 
hundreds of millions of dollars of investment into their plants and made those plants the most competitive in the world. To just pick U.S. Steel, for example, U.S. Steel put $100 million into its pipe mill in Lorain, Ohio. That pipe mill in Lorain, Ohio has been killed by South Korean dumping into our market. South Korea built a oil country tubular mill and they don't drill one inch, not chuck not one inch in their own country. And they made that tube, oil country tubular goods, with steel from China that was under sanctions from America. So we need to make sure that we're watching for transshipment. We need to make sure that people are playing by the rules. Right. And South Korea doesn't drill in their own country. Their decision is to target America. And they've now got almost 80% in the market. And that $100 million I, that U.S. Steel put into Lorraine yeah. might as well have had a barbecue with let it. Me, let me ask you this, a political question yes, here. Sir. Uh, obviously, traditionally, unions have been uh, more supportive of Democratic candidates or the Democratic Party. Donald Trump's obviously made a, a different type of campaign, was truly trying to win over some of your rank and file. How popular is Donald Trump in the Steelworkers Union? Let, let me say this, that Donald Trump was able to see the steelworker agenda. What, what he did is what we've been fighting for for more than 30 years. And I think what happened is that this, he's going to have a major impact on our members. It's going to make it very hard for our members to ignore what he's just did. And what mm. makes me sad is we've been trying to get Democrats to do this for more than 30 years. Is it going to translate to Republicans who are fighting you guys on this? Most of the Capitol Hill Republicans know. are against you on this. Uh, yeah. Well, look, we'll see what happens. And uh, we, we won't be one-trick ponies. We won't make our decision of who we recommend based on one issue. There's a lot of issues that our members right. care about. We care about what happened to uh, our health care program. We care what happens to the environment. We care about what happens to real job creation. We care about what happens to job training. We have a lot of issues that we care about. This will certainly be one of them. And uh, I think, as okay. I said, Wilbur Ross in particular deserves a lot of credit for All recognizing right. that the next 20 years, if they look like the last 20 years, we'd be in serious trouble. And Please. for those right. that don't recognize Thanks. it, it's uh, one last point. We're the most productive steel industry yep. in both U.S. and Canada in the world. Leo Girard, head of the Steelworkers Union, thanks for coming on, sharing your views. Much appreciated, sir. Thanks to be on, Chuck. Look forward to more. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.